Good morning everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Okay, so I've got my tree or vine in position. I've finished my windows and my front door. So I'm really happy with that. I haven't finished the French knots and the beads. I just don't like them. So I want to unpick that. I won't do it on video today because that's, you know, laborious viewing. But yeah, I just don't like them. I feel like they blend too much. And I'm looking up at the TV screen and it just looks like a, a lump of something with two little beads sitting on it. It's just not distinctive flower enough for me. So I'm, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do there yet. So we'll have a bit of a think about that today. And I wanna work through what we do on the um, vine. Now, um, I did grab these two containers of uh, flowery braids and I thought there might be something in here that we can pull apart to sort of create the look we're looking for. It'll give it a nice dimensional sort of um, feel. So let's have a little look in here. I know I've used that one See, already that's that's better. See what I mean? Like, I just, it needed to be a little bit um, more punchy. That just looks so dowdy. That already looks gorgeous. I think there's a few different colours in there too. No, we're not blue, are we? We do have a bit of purple mauve. No. See, immediately it's 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 better here's a red one. Oh, is that the same oh, it's got to be that I, hit, I thought there was a red look at that one I think it's got to be this pink one I think it picks up the pink in the walls of the um, little house yeah that's the one well that's that solved now I need my quick unpick I must say, while I quick unpick this too, I have to thank you all for your really, really beautiful comments regarding the French postcard series that I have just completed. You guys, I tell you, I wish I could go traveling all the time and then bring back, you know, that experience for you all. I, I'm just blown away by how much that series and having a, a look at where I went and what I did has meant to some of you really really yeah you've touched my heart guys I wish I could travel every once a month I head off to a different country buy a heap of stuff and come back <laughs> wouldn't that be good unfortunately I can't but um yeah it's it's really 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 good I um was chatting to my husband about it and I said I might do a couple little series where I explore southeast Queensland maybe and visit a heap of the um, quilt shops and fabric shops that are around here and show you guys sort of what's available in uh, in Australia so it won't be as exciting for the local ladies but you never know there might be a shop there that you didn't know existed so I've got to do my research it's going to be hard not to shop in the shops but I'm gonna to have to be a very strong girl and set myself maybe a theme or a color palette I'm gonna to have to be very very careful or maybe even look for um, accessories like tools to assist in the room like needles and you know just uh, hexagon templates or you know utilitarian type purchases so anyway it's i'm just sort of throwing the idea around at the moment but yeah shame i wasn't living say in the uk and i could slip over to france and slip over to spain and slip over here and slip over there wouldn't that be just a dream oh, i cannot believe how much fresher that house has become by putting those flowers there I just knew it wasn't right. I'll show you that bit I mentioned yesterday too that I just don't think is very pretty. 
I might be able to see it actually from there. Just this bit through here. I might be wrong. Looks better on the TV than it does in real life. I just feel like it's not doing anything. It's definitely a detail. I don't know. It's like episode three or something when I did it. And I know I did yellow flowers and you just couldn't even notice them. They didn't pop. So I ended up changing it out to white flowers and that certainly did help. I just feel like there's a mishmash of something happening there. But anyway, I've got plenty of gaps that I haven't even got anything in. So why am I worrying about things that aren't even done or have been done? All right, we need three little pieces. Oh, I love that. That's heaps better. I was thinking about the piece this morning when I was making my coffee and why why the flowers on that house just don't seem to blend with the rest of it. And I feel like I've sort of transitioned a little from the beginning of the project through down to the bottom. I feel like down the bottom I got a little bit braver with colour and I started throwing a bit more red around and the pinks and really sort of exploring it all. Where up here I was probably still stuck in this green and red color palette and as I sort of headed out things got a little bit um, more vibrant so it's interesting how you transition through color now where's my needle now the other thing I had to bring you up to speed with was I realized that in the video Monday that was my first Roxy Creations update where I was working on the, the strip. Um, I said how I was going away for the weekend and I was going to be shopping with my mate Sue for some baby things. And then I'd give you an update. Well, I didn't, I completely forgot. I did wrap up the parcel and the courier picked it up and it's being actually delivered today, which is you, for you, it'll be the day before what's today goodness me what's today it's Wednesday so you'll be watching this no today's Thursday oh goodness me what's today today's Wednesday so it'll be the day before I've filmed this anyway I'm gonna move on because I'm don't even know what day it is I can hear fudgy bellowing so he's distracting me a bit let me get this out of my way a little bit. So I have to tell you what all transpired with the, the gift. Like I said, it's all wrapped up. The courier's got it. And my Wednesday, your Thursday, it will be already delivered. So I can speak about it. It'll be all surprises will be had. So anyway, the weekend rolled along with lots of things to do. And on Sunday, we finally got a chance to slip out, Sue and I, to do this baby shopping. I'm going to turn this a little bit, get my angles right for my hands, ow. And um, we went down to the local shopping centre in Harvey Bay and um, went into, first of all, uh, we decided we wanted to lock it for mum. And then we were going to swing by some of the department stores and see what else we could find for little baby. But we were very much focused on mum. Any, we went into um, Michael Hill first. They're a big jewellery chain here in Australia. And the first thing we found was, well, really the only thing we found was this tiny little heart on a chain that looked like it had little diamond encrusts on it uh, I don't even know if they're diamond but the price suggested it was but it was cute it was cute but it wasn't a locket so we left there and we went across to a smaller brand business I can't even remember the name of it now and they were predominantly silver so we left there and went across to Angus and Coots which formerly known as Amy's pretty big company in Australia as well and the lady in there was just lovely just lovely she was a young mum herself so straight away we hit a hit a common 
common goal, common theme with babies. And um, we said we were looking for a locket, so we went through all the lockets and we found one pretty much straight away. It was beautiful. It was a heart, had some scrolly um, engraving on it, and then through that was a, like a little banner space where you could write a name and when you popped it open, um, you could put a little locket of hair or a photo inside. So we were stoked. But, you know, with these little lockets that you buy, they give you a little chain that's not really a chain. So you really need to get a chain. So, and that proved to be the hard part. We went to the section where the chains were and everything looked like it was like $99 on sale. There was like a whole bank of them with big tickets, 99, 99, 99. Uh, the odd 149 so anyway, we started looking through all those and everything we picked up, she sort of said, oh, if a baby was to tug on that, it would easily break. And we thought, well, we better get something sturdy, like you would think that. So probably after about 20 minutes of looking through, you know, heaps of chains, there's probably 50, 60 of them there, we found a chain. It was beautiful. It felt strong. It was solid. So we're like, that's it wrap it up. So we head to the register and um, then we got sidetracked again. We, we hadn't really looked in the front window. So we went to the front window. We're looking through there and we spotted for not a lot of money, a, a disc. And then engraved on the disc was a tiny little bear. And we thought, oh, that has to be. And it was $35. So it was very, very inexpensive. And we thought, oh, just We'll do it. So we put the disc and the locket together on the chain. And we thought, well, maybe dad might wear the disc on a bracelet or, you know, I'm not sure if dad is a jewellery man, but it gives them some, some options, you know, even if they gave it to grandma. I know grandma really well as well. So we've got the, the locket, the chain and the disc. Anyway, we get to the register and it's getting all wrapped up. Well, not wrapped yet. She's ringing it up on the register. And um, she says, oh, you've saved quite a lot of money because the chain I was able to reduce somewhat. Plus the locket was already on sale. And I thought, didn't twig at the time that, you know, this chain had been reduced by her. I should have twigged then that, okay, it's not one that was on sale. So she gets to the point of sale, time to run the card through, and she says, that's $1,200. And I was like, whoa, what, what happened? You know, what happened? Like, I love the girl, but I wouldn't even spend that much on me for a chain. Um, and she said, oh, it's X dollars. I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was huge. And uh, she says, oh, I took, you know, $300 off the chain to reduce. I think it was about $800 or something. And I thought, oh, oh, okay. And you know when you're standing there and you don't want to cause a fuss and you're like, oh, my gosh, that's more than what I'd want to spend. So I made the comment that, oh, you know, oh, I sort of feel like that's a bit over my budget. And I, I sort of got a little bit embarrassed that I didn't. I should have checked the price of the chain. I should have checked. And then I could have said at the at the counter, when we're looking, no, that's, you know, not too much. But I would have assumed that she got the feeling where my budget was. I'd rather spend more on the locket than I want on the chain. So long story short, I plucked up the courage and said, uh, mm, sorry, we're going to have to reselect a chain because that's just... Yeah, not in my budget. And as I said to um, Sue, I wouldn't even spend that on myself. Now, different story if I was in a fabric store or I was in France looking at old linens that look like they need to be in the bin and it came to $1,200. Not a problem. Wouldn't even bat an eyelid. You know how it is, ladies. A girl's got to have her, her crafty bits. But a piece of jewellery, mm, you know. So... Anyway, we reselected and we got ourselves a chain that actually I thought and Sue agreed that it was actually probably nicer. It had a little 
little twist about it. So when the light hit it, it sparkled. And then the locket had this engraving on it that when the light hit it, it sparkled. So I sort of feel like we actually matched it up quite well. So anyway, she wrapped it up and we got out of there. I'm like, wow, that could have been disastrous. But you know how you sort of feel like you don't want to upset the cookie cut cutter or the apple cart? Is it apple cart? But the price is like you've just gone and choked on something. So yeah, anyway, it was my fault I didn't establish pricing clearly at the counter. So anyway, so that was the chain experience. Then we trotted down to uh -huh, down to Kmart. We thought, well, we'll have a look there because I really wanted to get a rubber ducky. So we get down to Kmart. Every little kid needs a rubber ducky in their bath. So we, we trot down there and there was a rubber ducky for like $3. And then I looked up and hanging for $7 was a huge rubber ducky with about four little rubber duckies sitting on its back. Now, I'm sure if you guys are mums out there, you're like, oh yeah, that's been around for years. But for me, who's not a mum and very rarely buys rubber duckies, uh, it was very exciting. So I'm in Kmart just cooing and whistling and carrying on like an idiot. Uh, Sue's giggling away. <laughs> it was so funny. And we're like, got this rubber ducky in our hand and we're like, excellent. This is just a family of rubber duckies. So we thought, well, we've met our requirements. We've got everything we wanted, but we better just walk through the baby clothing aisle. And oh, how cute. Oh my God goodness. I could see how it had become addictive if you're a grandma buying clothes for grandchildren. Oh my goodness. So we're walking through and they had these little jumpsuit outfits, you know, where they zip through the center and their feet and their hands and everything's inside. Whatever they're called, jumpers, jumpies or I don't know. Can't you tell I'm not up on all this lingo? We had a look down the aisle and we found a set that was a gunmetal grey, um, an olive toned one and a grey and white striped one in a little set. It was very inexpensive and the, the olive one had little bears all over it. And oh my goodness. So Sue, <laughs> Sue and I are in the aisle going, oh, look at the bears. Oh. <laughs> It was hilarious. So whenever we saw a bear, like on the little pendant that went with the locket, the bear, we were like, oh, look at the bears. It's meant to be. We've got to get the bears. So we've now got the jumpsuit under our arm. Thank goodness I didn't spend the money on the big lock or the big chain. So we've got the bears. We've got the mother duck and the baby ducks, which is just so darn cute and adorable. So we're having a great time and we're like, well, we need a card. So we walk into the section where the cards are and there was a three-dimensional card there. And oh, you won't believe it, guys. It it was like a, a heart cut out and you push the bottom and it stands up on a counter. And looking through the heart, there was a daddy bear, a mummy bear and a baby bear, all sort of cuddling and standing in a cluster in the woods. And Sue and I, we lost it by then. We've just about got tears coming down our cheeks. <laughs> I'm like the bears. And of course, um, Elise is calling at the moment her little baby, baby bear. So we're like, we're, we've lost it. <laughs> it was so funny. We're trying to pull it together. And the, you know what the inscription it said? Once we were two and now we are three. Oh, <laughs> Oh, it's so beautiful. So we bought the card, the ducks, and the little set of three jumpsuits. And we had the best time. So I wrapped it all up yesterday. And of course, as I mentioned, Mary Ann made me a, um, a crocheted bear using the Heidi, Heidi patterns. Now, I was going to get you the um, details of that. I'll put it in the description if you are crocheters and you're thinking, 
Gee, that's something I could make. I've got a video of the bear and the goodies that Marianne made that'll be at the end. I'll probably show it to you in a moment as well. Did I cut a third one off? Yeah, I did. So the Heidi, Heidi bear is a, a lady from some South Africa that crochets these hexagons. It could be a hexagon with six sides, five sides, eight sides, whatever's needed, you crochet. And then you um, join them all together to create different animals. And I've made a bear for myself out of some special wool I got from Nundle, which is a one of the last of about two, maybe three wool um, mills in Australia. And we were visiting the region and went to Nundle. Oh, gosh, now I'm off on a sidetrack woman story. So we went to Nundle and I bought some um, yarn and it was like a, a real um, dark blue and red yarn. A, yeah, dark navy blue and a red. So I ended up making a dinosaur out of that one and that sort of was part of my Heidi bear patterns. It's um, I have a bear and I have a hippopotamus. So it's just, they're great patterns. You'll find them on Reveille, um, and you will find them directly um, on Heidi's website, the Heidi Bear patterns. And um, anyway, so Marianne, whenever she doesn't want to think too much, she just crochets these hexagons and then they get all joined together to make bears. And being in the school teacher world, there's always people having babies. So she sells these bears as a bit of extra pocket money. Now, in addition to the bear, she makes a little hat, a little, you know, beanie, which you can sit on top of the bear. She makes a little cardigan and some booties. And then um, a little rug that you could pop down on the carpet and lay baby on or use as a... Um, you know, an inlay to make something a little bit warmer, like a bench or something like that. Anyway, beside the point. So Sue hadn't seen that. So I made Sue a video when I got back to Brisbane and said, hey, Sue, this is what Marianne made. That little video will be at the end of the um, video today. So if you hear me say, hey, Sue, Technically, it was a video for Sue. It was only till last night that I realised that I had promised to actually show you guys those products that Marianne made. So, yeah, it's a really good little pattern, actually. Oh, I love these flowers. How much better are they? They feel like, they sort of feel like they hold their own on the piece. Everything's oversized and exaggerated. And I really feel like we've got, we've got it um, pegged now. Okay, they're done. So let me knot this off. You can hear Pepper and Bandit wolfing down the back of the block. They've had their breakfast and now they're off getting rid of some energy from bedtime. Pepper's decided to molt of all times of the year. She's decided to shed her main big coat. She's still got fur all over her body, but Australian shepherds have longer fur that gives them pantaloons, if you want for a better word, off the back of their legs. Under their tummy, they'll have fur hanging down around their neck, tops of their ears. It sort of gives them that real shaggy dog look. She's decided to shed it all. She's just over two, and she didn't shed it all last year, but this year she's, she's losing the whole lot. So, oh, she looks shocking. And it's coming into winter. I wouldn't have thought that was a real smart, smart thing to do. I love that. That house now feels like it's blending really well. 
yeah really good so before I get on to the next bit working out this here I just want to show you the Heidi bear video um, let's have a quick look like I said I will put it at the end so that's it there that's the Heidi bear see how they're all hexagons joined together she does a lovely job of it there's the little beanie isn't that gorgeous and then the booties and then the little cardigan oh it's so sweet and then we've got the little little blanket that you can just lay out and pop baby on that star pattern I bet the crochets out there will be familiar with those patterns so that's the little pack that's for baby so how gorgeous so I'll put that video at the end so you can have another little look so parcels gone and today is the day the parcel will arrive okay let's get this needle and thread ready okay what are we going to do let's pull these out we need colors that suit of course we don't want to use that again we've used bits of that one we don't want browns we don't want pinks I might even go back through this piece and if there's places where I can insert more three-dimensional flowers, I might. Don't want that. I don't think we want red. It'll, And it's the same as what we put on the house. I'm sort of thinking more like a, a rose or something. We don't want blue. Gee, there's not much in this little bag that will do the trick, is there? They're too pink, too lolly pink. Now this here, let's stuff that. I don't even want those. They're rainbow. I would be interested in that little rose bud. I do like that. If that came off, so we could have a white bramble rose. Yeah, they see they're only glued on, so it doesn't take much. And I like how the the branch matches it, but is it too matchy matchy? Hmm. Might be. Let's have a look. Something else. Is it too dreary? See, my original thought, I've still got my little circle here, was to cut little circles and do little red roses all over it with a bead. See, that to me is too dotty. With that, it's sort of competing a little. So I don't think I'm going to do that. Let's have a look in here and see what other flowers we've got. So we've got a cream, now he's not bad. Would totally destroy that braid once I took all the flowers off, there's really not much left. Having said that, that leather strap, I could use that to tie something like it's, you know, doesn't matter. It's a little bit blendy. See, it sort of looks like the dots. Yeah, I think I need to do something that's not like the dots. So let's put both of those away. What is this? Oh, it's just ruched. There is a bit of a flower shape in there and then it continues on. Gee, they're clever how they make these things. No, too similar. I mean, they're very similar. Not enough in that. 
Here we go. What have we got here? We don't need orange, so get rid of orange. <clears throat> okay. So we've got a chocolate. Oh, hello. This is pretty good. I wonder. I wonder if we can position, I like this, these roses. And I wonder if I can position the braid so that this little squiggly bit would look like a leaf. So I would need to get this section back under there in order to get the next flower stitched down but also to get the effect that we've got a leaf popping out. And then this one would say go here and then feed back under to get, it'll be a challenge, but I think it would look really good. I think this is it and I've got plenty of it. Let's get this brown one out. Maybe I think I've got more and I do. Oh no, I've got plenty. Okay. This will be a bit of a challenge because I'm going to try and manipulate the braid. If I cut it, will it fall to bits? Maybe not. I'd have to cut it. Let's try. If I cut flower, leaf, Snip. Scissors are useless. I'm going to put them in the bin. I'm sick of picking them up. And they're as blunt and as useless as anything. Okay. So I'm going to snip the piece that's holding it. Now I can snip. Cut it at an angle so it looks like a point of a leaf. So that's what we got. So we've got a rose with a leaf attached. Now if that comes in tight, we can stitch. That on and it would look like a rose and a leaf. Yep, that's it. And how well does it match the flowers? It's nice and strong. Yeah, oh, I love it. So let's see what we can do here. I might actually need a bead needle because that flower is going to be, oh no, so it's going to be quite dense. Let's see how we go. It's a case of catching, catching the rose first and anchoring that so it doesn't swizzle around. I found out how premmy baby was too, little bear. He's 28.6 weeks. So, but he's doing really well. Mum's able to nurse him now for three hours every day. He's one week old and he's put on 35 grams. He was born, he was 1.2 kilo. So he's so little. Oh my goodness, he's little. So he's got a lot of tubes and assistance at the moment, but um, they've done, I think it was a brain scan, looking for little bleeds, and it's fine. So his brain is looking good. 
is still growing and doing what it needs to do. He does have a valve. I think I'm remembering my little message properly. He has, I do apologize, Elise, if I've got this a little bit pear-shaped, but I believe there's a valve in his heart that hasn't yet quite come together, but they say they do, but it is something that they're monitoring because he's so early. That's sort of one of the last little things, apparently. Um, yeah, and the, the, I guess the big thing is he's putting on weight. He's continuing to to grow, but oh boy, he's little. Oh my goodness, aren't Premi babies tiny? Ow, there's a needle. So I'm just concertinaing that up a bit. It's sort of, to me, is giving way a little bit. So I'm going to really have to make sure that I put a lot of stitches into that braid because once you cut it, you're sort of breaking the manufacturing of it. So I'm just going to pull that down so I get the point. You know what this reminds me of is that when they do icing on cakes and there's two colours of icing that comes out of the little tube and they pipe those wiggly little flowers. You often see them on Easter eggs. Yeah, that's good. I like that. This is a real dimensional quilt. So there we go. We've got one rose and a flower. Not, I just said the same thing. One rose and a leaf. That's what I should have said. So let's, that leaf looks like it's, I might take, both of those because the leaf's in the middle maybe I can make it look mm, see you need the point of a leaf don't you otherwise it doesn't look like a, a leaf I've got to disconnect them I can't do it well, I could, but it'd just look like a rambling plant. But I want to try and get the feeling that there's a point on each of those leaves. I think that looks really good when I do that. Um, <clears throat> so that's secure. The rose. I'll need thread after this one. I wish I had more babies I could shop for. But that was fun. Sue's got grandbabies, so but they're all getting to that 18, 15. She's past being able to get those cute little bits and pieces for. Oh, we must have looked like a pair of idiots in the shop, cooing and carrying on. The boys, um, my husband and her husband, they went for a spin in, um, Davey has a hot rod that he's done up. He's a retired mechanic, so you can imagine mechanics, they, you know, make these really cool cars. And he used to be a mechanic in a um, pit lane, you know, drags, racing. So he's come from the industry. I think his father, if I recall, was a driver in the drags when he was a young fella. So he's been in the industry of cars all of his life. So he's got this, this hot rod coupe, um, really cool looking vehicle. So we, we announced that we were going to the shops to go baby shopping. So they looked at each other and said, let's take the coupe for a run. So Sunday, cruising along the Esplanade in the coupe. 
and then they pulled up at um, one of the many restaurants down the Esplanade and stopped in and had a cold drink. I presume it was of the alcoholic beverage nature. <laughs> cold beer, as you'd say in Australia. They had a beer overlooking the ocean. So they had a lovely day. After we finished doing our shopping, um, Sue had tried to purchase a camper bed. Um, Sue and Dave had bought themselves a camper trailer, being close to Fraser Island, and their kids have now got into the whole camping thing. Um, they had had a small caravan for many, many years and had done a lot of camping, but they'd sold it when they got to Harvey Bay. And um, now the kids are all wanting to do camping, so they've gone out and just bought a small, inexpensive camper trailer of second hand. So she needs a, um, a bed for them, one that's, you know, off the ground and it condenses up, but stretches out and you have your air mattress on top. So that morning when we were having breakfast, one popped up for sale in the next town for $30. So she sent him a message and said, um, is it still available? Can we come and get it Sunday afternoon? So we're in the shopping centre doing our baby thing and up popped a message to say, yes, it was available. So we thought, oh, well, the boys are sitting down on the esplanade enjoying a cold beer. Well, we'll continue on to the next town and we'll get this bed and by then we'll all be back at the house. So we drive all the way there. This lovely lady comes out. We grab the bed, hand over the $30, jump in the car, and off we go. So we get home. The boys are home. So we decide we're going to unpack this thing and have a look at it. And, of course, it's a air mattress within a, a sack thing that is attached to the legs of it. So we unpack it, and we're looking at it, and we're like, well, where's the plug for the the plug for the um the mattress bit to hold the air in there isn't one so the boys started teasing us it was so funny <laughs> 30 dollars. what do you expect do you expect a plug with it no of course not and the boys are just rolling their eyes going oh my goodness didn't you check it I'm like no we didn't check it we trusted it she was a lovely lady she had a big smile she looks so lovely and friendly. So we've bought this thing and it's got no plug to keep the air in it. It was hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. And they've got a, um, a puppy and the puppy's jumping all over it. He's loving it. He thinks it's, it's great. So we're like, well, it's a $30 dog bed, you know. Puppy seems to like it. <clears throat> so it's pretty funny. Anyway, I was talking to them. We've come back to Brisbane. I was talking to them yesterday. And I, I said, what are you guys up to today? And they said, oh, we're blowing up the air bed. I'm like, oh, so you've got a plug. And Davey says, yeah, we, we had an old air mattress that no longer inflated in the cupboard. So he said, I went ratting and I found a plug. And it fits the one that you guys bought. So all is good. We thought we'd been diddled. <laughs> I'd say the lady, let's let's be, you know, give her the benefit of the doubt. I'd say the lady didn't realise that the plug wasn't even in there. And to be honest, they're usually attached to the bed so that they don't get lost. There usually is a an attachment point. So it was pretty funny. We've got this bed and we're all standing there in the backyard looking at this thing. <laughs> and it had no plug to blow it up. Having said that, I think Sue actually wanted the frame more than anything because the camper trailer came with a mattress, but the mattress sits up high on this big bench and it's too high for them to climb in and out of, and they'd rather use that section to store their clothing and their food and, you know, just to have a nice high shelf for all of their bits and bobs. 
and then set up a, a bed to the side in the annex of this camper trailer that they then could pop the mattress on, which is, you know, a little bit more support for them. So I don't think the air bed was even really too much of a worry. But anyway, <laughs> it was awful funny. It was a bit of an adventure. So I've got another rose stitched on. I think this is going to be great. I'm loving the colours. It really suits. And by using the green braid that's between... Why do I keep losing my scissors? Using the green braid that's between the roses. That's good. I'm not just destroying a braid, picking off all the roses. So that's good. There we go. So let me zoom in so you can see. You can see the little brambly rose. I might end up undoing that bit there so that my crocheted flower, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to make it look like the branch of the bramble rose. is behind that flower. It seems a shame to go over it. Now that I've settled on a rose, I feel like, now I do wanna, do I cut that? Yeah, I will, because I'll be able to knot it from behind. I can unpick that and then I'll knot it again from behind down into there. Yep, I'll be able to fix that up and then bring bring that back a little bit more. Yeah, that's good. Now it looks like those that garden of flowers is in front of the house and the bramble rose, which is where it should be. Sort of getting that layered look, yeah, that's good. So I'll take those two threads back through the underneath and knot them off. Okay, now, how are we going for time? Oh goodness, where's my braid? Let's get ourselves another little rose and leaf. Okay. We'll get the rose into position first, and then we'll work out where we take the leaf. Does it go up, down, sideways? Tell you what, it was cold here yesterday. Today doesn't seem as cold, but um, last night it actually felt quite humid and there was a couple of times I woke up through the night and I was kicking off the blankets, which usually means there's rain coming because, you know, you get that bit of humidity come through. But this morning it was like ice. And I thought, oh, the rain's not coming. Maybe something passed through. But boy, it was cold this morning. I actually slept in for the first time in probably 12 months. It was like 7 a.m. before I got out of bed. Usually I'm up at 4, 5. And I woke up at 7. Pepper was looking at me through the bedroom door with a little, little yup, yup. Breakfast. She's like, what are you doing? I would have had breakfast hours ago. 
So it's getting a bit of attitude. So now let's let's concertina this little leaf in. Bring it right in to get the shape. It's such a great way to do a little leaf if you had a, a thin little ribbon. Do some stitches through the ribbon to concertina it in. And then you can couch it into position on your work and you get quite an interesting little leaf. And just try and get your point of your leaf and then when people look at it they'll see it and they'll go yeah that's definitely a leaf because you'll you'll have that point now i've trimmed that braid or maybe that was the end that i hadn't trimmed and it's not a point there we go it was a bit flat One more flower. Is that on strong enough? Yep. Very good. Oh, gosh, they go silly after breakfast, don't they? You guys must just about hear those pair every video. Goosing around. All right. So next little rose. If we break it there and cut our angle. Okay. Needle. Where'd the needle go? Oh, come on. Seriously, where'd it go? There it is. Have I got a knot? Yep. So, oh, now I've lost me thread. Oh, all the signs are telling me we're getting to the end of the video and I should be leaving you guys alone. Be sick of listening to me prattle on. Some of you, are, some of you guys, are so funny. <laughs> you tell me what you're doing for the day while you're listening to me, and it's just hilarious. A lot of you are doing housework, which is just crazy. Girls, stop it! Stop it! <laughs> no housework. No, we've got to do that, don't we? I've had it as well. I put my ear earbuds in and then I'll go and mop the floor and I can hear Rachel talking to me in my ear from Roxy Creations. It's funny. You feel like at least you're zoning out a little bit from the task at hand. Oh, now the knot's not. Oh, what an effort this blooming rose is. <sighs> It's fiddly. It'll be worth it. I've done it again. It's nearly a bead needle, this one. It's nice and sharp so it can get through, <clears throat> get through the, um, see there's glue on the bottom of that. Can I get it off? Get a little bit, yeah. There we go. Maybe that's why I had to stop and have another look because it was glue. That's better. For those of you that um, love the postcard series where I use the fabrics that I got on my trip, 
to Paris. Those of you that love that, you'll be pleased to know I'm starting a new series and I'm going to be doing a Japanese rice bag in those colours and tones because I really, really want that looking at me every day. And because the bag, I designed it so that it can be used to hold things. And that way it's on my desk or on my shelf, you know, just part of my day. So I filmed the first episode. So as soon as I feel like I've got back on top of this, these projects, the Roxy projects, I'll start that series. So any day you'll see a Japanese rice bag using the French fabrics pop up. But once I work through these and make sure that I've, you know, got them to where I need to have them, we do have a couple more prompts, so I sort of can't go too crazy. I'm happy that we've got this house done because that's sort of the last bit up here that I needed to do. There is work on the side perimeter, you know, coming down that side. I believe there's a flower here somewhere that I haven't yet stitched. So there will be a little bit of work to do on this yet. But I would say by the weekend, we will be on to the Japanese rice bag. So I hope you'll enjoy that. I haven't got that little pig thrown showing so we're going to bring that up there we go and we'll take ourselves another one let's twist it around so we've got to get good. Now the camera's right up on me there. I might just back it off now. Bring it back up. I think you got the general gist. And that way I don't need to worry too much about it going in and out of focus. And you guys can see. Mind you, you're probably all off doing the washing now, just listening to me. So good on you girls. Doing a good job. I did my washing yesterday. I cleaned up my kitchen yesterday. So I feel like I've got a day of R&R &R today. Actually, something else I can tell you we're up to. We're, tonight, we're going to see the theatre production of Moulin Rouge. It's based on the movie that Ewan, Ewan McGregor and Nicole Kidman did many years ago. I think it... Um, I think it came to Australia in 2020 and it had arrived in Melbourne and it was just starting to get going and then the whole pandemic thing happened. So they had a tough time trying to get that production up and going and they finally got Melbourne done. They went on to Sydney and now, finally, they're here. So we're very excited. We were considering flying to Melbourne to see it as a bit of a, a weekend thing. But we were just so scared that the way the flights were going to be cancelled at the drop of a hat, we we're thinking, oh, let's just let's just hope that one day they come to Brisbane. And they have. So as soon as they announced it, I got us four tickets. So um, Mary Ann and her hubby are coming too. And having stood out the front of the famous Moulin Rouge in Paris a few weeks ago, that was a bit bit special so now we get to see the show we couldn't get tickets to see the show in Paris you've nearly got to book a year in advance just could not get in there so tonight's the night so it's at our QPAC theatre in the centre of Brisbane at the South Bank Parklands so we were chatting last night on Facebook about where we would go for dinner so We've chosen an Italian restaurant. It was a toss up between an Italian restaurant and a Mexican restaurant. 
So we, the boys had the final say. We, we couldn't decide, Marianne and I. We're just going round and round circles. We were finding so many great places. We're like, just make a decision now. So the boys had the final say and they felt like pizza and we were like, well, that we could have a pasta dish it would be nice. So that's our evening. So that's a bit exciting. Forgotten about that. I was so busy, caught up on our weekend away that suddenly I realized that those tickets were tonight because they're midweek. The, the show sold out so quick. The best I could get was like a, a Wednesday night, but that's fine. It'll be nice and easy to get in and get a park and because that part of town on the weekend gets pretty chaotic. So I've, I've hit the hour. I'll just finish this little guy. Um, where is it? It's sort of concertinaed up and twisted this one. There we go. Bring him back into shape. So if I did ribbon embroidery, this little concertina ribbon would actually be reasonably easy to reproduce. Yeah, I like that. Get our point happening so it looks like a leaf. to come. Here we go. Beautiful. Well, I'm going to leave it at that because we've come to the end of our hour. I believe I could probably stitch on another six little roses, I'd say. So I will do that and then I will see you all in the next video as we catch up on all of our Roxy projects. Yeah, look at that little rose bush. So I'll work a couple more up through here and up here. So it really will look like a little rose vine that's gone across the top of that. Don't want to lose that needle. It's so fine. All right, guys. I'll leave you alone. Have a lovely day. Enjoy your stitching and I will see you all in the next video. Bye for now.